but what is it supposed to be used for is the question. I mean, it's the remote control to your life. Right. You know, it we, does. It's not just the phone anymore. It's it's your communication device. It's it's everything. Mm -hmm. It's your research tool. It's your calculator. It's, yep. it's everything you can think of. So it's not like the worst thing ever. It's not. And absolutely takes your attention. It's just like it helps save you so much time. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's another double-edged sword. The phone is an amazing tool. And that's why people, everybody has one. You're checking out the Investor Shed Podcast with Nick Beveridge and Jeremy Kitchen. They're on the path to financial freedom and they're taking their community with them. Stay tuned for the best free real estate investing advice on the internet. I can get back on my phone if you want. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to the Investor Shed Podcast. I'm Nick Beveridge, here with my co-host, Jeremy Kitchen, who was literally just on his phone you know funny? <laughs> as I was... I was trying to sneak a, a quick recording. <laughs> you know what's funny? We, the, the episode this week, by the way, is about ADHD and investing with ADHD, how to use it for your superpower and how to actually get over humps. I was legitimately... We, I put my phone on airplane mode when we record. Uh -huh. I had three people trying to schedule appointments while we were on that call. Right. <laughs> so I, I was literally doing work. I promise you. No, that's okay. I just think it, it was hilarious <laughs> because like I started, I was trying to record um, uh, <laughs> and, and catch you in the action because we talk a lot about you being on your phone too much. Yeah. Um, that anyway. was one of the times I was using it for business though. So that, that goes towards my daily allocation of minutes, which is far too many on my phone. <laughs> um, but I think Nick, we have a really, really good episode today. I think it's going to help those that have issues with focus. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we dive into a lot of resources that I use. Um, we drive into a lot of resources that we just got back from a conference. Anthony Vecino yep. mentioned to us and just mind opening, eye opening stuff about how to um, really get into flow state and really focus. So it's good stuff. Yeah. Do you think people should fast today? They should fast their way to Arby's. Oh, drive fast to Arby's. <laughs> cheddar melts. <laughs> yeah, drive fast to Arby's. Go get yourself a beef and cheddar um, and some curly fries. And you know what? If you're not lactose intolerant, get yourself a Jamocha shake. You earned it. You know, Arby's comes up for just a minute in this podcast. And uh, yes. if you can spot it and post it on uh, or comment it on YouTube, you might just win a prize. You probably The won. first person to talk about Arby's, <laughs> I'm going to send them a hat. I want to talk about Arby's in the comments. Okay. Well, then I might send you a hat. I'll just we got new hats to give drop away. and I'll do it at 5 a.m. <laughs> on Thursday when it comes out. Sounds um, good. Yeah, stick around. You're going to enjoy the episode. We love you. We appreciate you. Let's go. Uh, if we're a little scatterbrained this morning, that's because we are talking about ADHD in real estate. Woo! What do you think of that topic, Jeremy? Does... Um, I think it hits home for me specifically, and it probably hits home for a lot of other investors out there who are um, scatterbrained, maybe self-diagnosed, maybe professionally diagnosed. Um, we're going to try to talk to you about how to get through some of the um, hurdles with... Um, you know, just, just getting in your focus. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't have ADHD. Um, this isn't for me. We're going to be talking a lot about just like how, to, how do you actually get in the habit of staying focused on your work? Mm -hmm. Because that is one of the biggest, um, problems that I th see most people face, including myself is like, how do I just stay focused on tasks? Um, and, I think I think it's perfect talking to you, Jeremy, because like you're a person that's actually been diagnosed with this. That's correct. Yes, and I've been internet diagnosed. <laughs> <laughs> internet, uh, yes. Yeah, surveys did say Nick does have ADHD. Yes, um, I know him. I've known him for 30, 30 years now, and and I'm not a doctor, but I, I would diagnose you as somebody with that or or some other medical condition. Oh, really? <laughs> I see. I thought when we la when we first spoke about this a few years ago. And I found out you had it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were talking to me, and, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I don't have that. Because there are some things that, like, really get you focused and mm -hmm. some things that, like, just make you crazy. And we seem to be slightly the opposite, right? Yeah. This is not a one-shoe-fits-all one scenario, though. Like, I mean, ADHD and ADD is it's just such a broad spectrum. Like, spectrum. Everyone has some sort of disorder. There's no perfect person. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, whether you're diagnosed or not, like, we all, like, our blood and the way our, our bodies work, it, it's such a complex machine. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be 
you know, exactly like a, your ADHD, but I'm sure there's things that you're focusing on that you think like, oh, I need help with this. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that most people suffer with, with is that they are trying to focus on things that just do not interest them. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, maybe if that's you, it's time to look at doing something else. Sure. That's, that's, uh, my opinion, I guess. Yeah. Like for instance, a lot of people that have extreme ADHD, mm -hmm. they can focus their ass off on video games, which yeah. take an incredible amount of attention. Mm -hmm. Right. Like right. you can't, you can't move your eyes for more than a few seconds if you're like in something deep. Right. Right. <laughs> Like it, it doesn't mean that you cannot pay attention to something. Right. It, it definitely goes with dealing with your interests, but I think it does go deeper than that a little bit, Nick. Like um, on a business spectrum in general, like if you're not interested in what you're doing, you're not going to do very well at it. Uh, and that, that's just base level. This has nothing to do with ADHD, obviously, but this, I can't remember where I heard it. But if you're going to be starting a business, you have to have interest and you have to love it because your love will actually transcend your ability to focus. That's true. So. I think I think so. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Jeremy, um, when did you find out that you had a, a, a focus problem? When did I find out? Um, I've known for a very, very long time that I've had focus issues. Um, it could date back to as early as elementary school. Okay. Um, I didn't get diagnosed until I was an adult. Wow. So, like, my, my childhood, basically, and this is not a knock on anything or anyone in that, but... Um, I had expectations to, you know, live up to my siblings and I, I couldn't do it. There was no way I could focus in school. I, I almost flunked out of school basically. Yeah. You didn't do well. I did not but do well. The funny thing is like you were, I think you were smarter than me book wise, like a academic wise. Sure. Like you can speak fluently, you mm -hmm. can write, you can know how to spell things. Right. Um, you almost flunked out. Guess what? I, I had straight A's. Right. Like my, <laughs> my final my final year in high school mm -hmm. when I just decided, eh, I'm going to focus on this. Right. But it was, it was more of a decision than anything. I think, um, that's, but that's a theory sure. of mine. Yeah. 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 And just but go ahead. Why do you think you failed or almost flunked out of high school? It wasn't just high school. It was uh, going back to honestly, elementary school where I was like basically sliding into home plate to try to get to the next grade. Um, summer school, almost every single year of my, one through 12. Um, definitely sixth through 12th grade. It was summer school every single year, yeah. except for one year. I think I didn't have to do summer school one year. And that was amazing not to have to go to school. In the summer. <laughs> I remember that because mm -hmm. we grew up together. Right. We hung out all the time. We, we stayed the night at each other's houses, but yeah, summertime, that was school time for Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I and always thought that was interesting because I never saw you as a dumb person. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. But, um, even like I didn't get to graduate with my class. I had to take summer school classes as a post senior in order to get my diploma. Um, that's a humiliating experience when all the other kids in there are kind of, you know, I would, don't want to say degenerates, but like, oh, I'm in it with the people who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and it does, it comes back to, you know, interest in the subject and it comes to practical application. I think, um, school did not interest me one bit. Why do you think that is? I think it's the method of teaching. Tell me about that. Okay. So I think, I, and this is, again, not a knock on teachers or anything like that, but we can all be honest, the public school system's kind of shit. For most people. For most people, yeah. Maybe. Um, being, Some people love it. Being in an environment where you're staring at a pad, and you have an assignment, and they just say, like, write, you know, six, write six pages on Columbus, right? I didn't freaking care. Yeah. Like... I was smart enough, but I, I really didn't care about the subject, so I found myself wandering most times. Yeah. Just just completely lost in thought, thinking about how I'm going to make my next video or how I'm going to do <laughs> the next thing. Um, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a weird experience, but... It was it a blur, or do you remember it pretty well? I don't remember much, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think, um, we're, I think we're similar there. Yeah, and, and that has nothing to do, I don't think, with ADHD more, say, than just overstimulation and memory issues in general. <laughs> right. We were understimulated, so memories fo are foggy. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there was definitely no stimulation in public stool school. So, um, Well, were there any classes that you excelled at? Yeah, video class. Okay. Yeah. Because it interests you. Yeah. Um, specifically in high school, it was uh, Gabe Lawson was my teacher. 
And he basically taught me how to edit videos and how to be kind of in the technological world. And that class held my attention. Yeah, <laughs> that's the key there. Mm -hmm. Like, what can hold your attention? Right. And I remember, like, I used to flunk out of English, math, everything. It wasn't until I started, like, writing. And I used to write raps and dumb jokes and stuff. But I realized, like, oh, I'm pretty decent at English. Uh, I just didn't care for the structure that was pitched to me in school. Okay. So how did you get through it? I wish I knew. I wish I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> I have... was, there, was there anything that you found in school that helped you stay focused? No. 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 Nothing. Nothing. Um, I graduated in like, full transparency. I think I graduated with like a 1.2 oh, wow. GPA. So it's an pretty average D, D minus. Yeah. Like, I slid in a home plate, and the umpire was like, I, I don't know if you're out or not. <laughs> okay. And I think they felt pity for me and just kind of gave me a diploma, to be honest with you. But you graduated. But I graduated. Yeah. So, and you never went to college. I went to one semester of college. Oh, okay. This Tell was, me about that. This was when Ari was first born. My firstborn daughter was born. Um, I did a semester at North Idaho College. I flunked that, too. Um, I, I was preoccupied with other things, to give myself a little bit of credit, though. Having yeah. a newborn daughter and trying to figure out like how to be an active part of her life while trying to do school that I didn't really understand or, again, have an interest in. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, something's got to go, and it's got to be school. So Yeah. And that, yeah. Was, that was the end of that. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think school would have done for you if you stayed in? I, I don't think it would have done much, to be honest with you. Same here. Um, I've never had to be like, I've never had to show credibility for going to school. I've never had to show credibility for having college credits because I don't have them. Um, even the people I do know who have college credits can tell you that their diploma hasn't exactly served them. Yeah. I hear that way too much. Yeah. Because we're 37. Right. And we went to high school with a bunch of people. We did. And a lot of those people went to college, mm -hmm. got into debt, got diplomas. I know like four people. Yeah that used their college. Yeah. <laughs> like what, what, I know an, an attorney and a doctor <laughs> and I say four cause there's probably two others, sure. <laughs> but that's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I know a lot of people, I mean, th this was more, it was more apparent to me when it was in my mid twenties when they were getting out of college and just had no idea how to do life and had a bunch of debt. Yeah. And it seemed like, you know, in that was, a uh, let's see late, yeah, around 2009, 2010, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, it seemed like a lot of those, that crowd, um, they just seemed lost. Um, they, they were starting to realize that their college didn't really guarantee them a job, especially because we were just in a recession. Right. Um, and it was, it was interesting to, I felt like I dodged a bullet. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Just getting to hear that overwhelming experience with most of those people that went to college, right. and it didn't really serve them as much as they thought it would. Right. And did your wife? I can't remember. Did your wife go to college? Yeah. Yeah. She's she got a her bachelor. Yep. Okay. She's got a. Yep. And she'll tell you that um, it was a great experience, mm -hmm. but it did not help her one bit when it came to a career. That's right. Um, My wife so, has a degree as well, right? And she'll, she'll tell you the same thing. I think she has a degree in like public relations. I don't ask her a lot about her college because it's just not something that we're pitching or we actively like, oh, I'm a college graduate. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you can succeed without having a, a degree. Um, and we're living proof of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was it like? going through uh the many different types of jobs that you had were there any jobs that you felt like you really excelled because of your adhd good question i don't think i ever excelled at any job okay. um the one i would say would have been you know ginger snap media when i was working for you that oh was, okay yeah i i felt like i did pretty damn well at that one well you, so you skipped a lot of jobs then I did skip a lot. <laughs> because because you've had a lot right i mean like you've... i've been promoted to manager i've been in a lot of different positions obviously but nothing that i, I feel like wow this is my calling or oh, okay. this is something i'm like super proud of um mostly it was an accountability for like getting to work and staying to work yeah did you ever have any jobs though that when you were doing the jobs whether it was, you know, going to be a long-term thing or not, did you ever feel like, man, I'm just in the zone and it feels good? 
Yeah, I guess there were a couple times. I would say, you yeah. know, car detailing has gotten me that. Dude, that same. flow space a few times. And Isn't we'll that... talk about flow space here in a bit. But That is so weird that you mentioned that because I've had, as you know, a shit ton of jobs. Yep. Like, I, I think from the time I was um, 14 to tw- 27 or something like that, 26, mm-hmm. I, I had well I had well over 25 jobs. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't because I got fired constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I never got fired, actually. Yeah, yeah. I okay. came close once <laughs> because I was an idiot, but I quit before I got fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you, Arby's. <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten fired um, from that job, but you, you definitely quit. And you yeah. Left with a blazing trail of And I've had so many great jobs, too. I've, I've had jobs where I just, you know, I'm a lifeguard on a boat just driving around a lake. Um, i I was a videographer for discovery cove where I just got to deal with dolphins all day long and, and video dolphins, mm-hmm. but I don't think I've ever had a better job than detailing cars. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. I felt like I was just in, and maybe it's my, uh, self-diagnosed internet ADHD. Yeah, you did take a quiz. It said it. I did a quiz, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just amazing to feel like I was just making progress um twice a day Mm -hmm. good progress you take this piece of junk car you got headphones on you have no one telling you what to do you get to work at your your own pace yeah and i can listen to music or i can listen to podcasts there Mm -hmm. was no podcast back then really but it was more i was listening to tony robbins right get the edge okay nonstop. i love it (laughs) um but it was just amazing to have a job like that where also you weren't like uh, your income wasn't necessarily limited either because the quicker you got your job done, the more more money you can make because mm-hmm. they, they paid you off the cars that you were Right, finishing. you get paid off commission in that for sure. Yeah. Um, but what, what do you think, um, what what was it about detailing cars that you think uh, satisfied your um, um, your issues in your head? Yeah, it was a couple things. Kind of going back to what you talked about too, Nick, like it was the ability to work at your own pace without having somebody breathe down your neck. Yeah. Like just putting in headphones and, and seriously like diving into a project, specifically like car detailing, which was kind of a dirty business at times, but yeah. it was, um, so you get to take a really dirty thing and take it and make it really clean. And, yeah, and seeing really that nice. progress from a like, oh, I've done this. Like I vacuumed the carpets, I cleaned the windows, I did it all myself. Windows. Oh, yeah. Like it was just like running a power washer and steam cleaning an engine. It feels so good, and it's like you can see mm-hmm. the progress as you you're see doing the progress. It, right? So like it's almost like a bar. Like oh, I've done five percent of the job. I've done ten percent of the job. I've done fifty percent of the job. Yeah. And then you get done, and you're like, fuck, that's cool. Yeah, you put that last like coat of uh, wax on, yep. and you're wiping it down. You bre- and then you br- pull it out of the garage mm-hmm. in the sunlight. You might need to touch up a little bit more because now it's in sunlight. Right. But <laughs> you feel so proud of yourself. Like I did that, and it's done. Yeah. Not only is it done, it looks freaking amazing. Yeah, I, I did that, and no one was breathing down my neck. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of recognition either. But your bosses no. don't come up to you and like, "My God, you cleaned that car!" <laughs> you did your exact like it's all self fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's but, definitely self fulfilling accountability. Like like if when you pull out the car and you bring it to the customer, they'll bring it right the hell back if you don't do a good job. <laughs> so and, yeah, it was also sure. um, I don't know about you, but like physically, it felt good too oh. because like you're just you're constantly crouching with the buffer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a heavy piece of equipment that mm-hmm. you're like you're on your knees you're, you're getting a, a really good workout yeah twice Absolutely. a day <laughs> yeah you're on your knees you're doing a lot of scraping pulling like, and just you you feel really good at the end of the day like wow yeah even yeah. though you're dirty and you're full of chemicals and you probably you know you're probably a little bit dumber every day because of the chemicals that you're breathing oh 100 <laughs> percent. and that's why i didn't want to do it long term mm-hmm. um because i saw you know the, the results of some people that have been doing it forever and they just kind of seem like they're just you know, they seem like car dealers. They no seem offense. like they've been huffing chemicals for a long time. <laughs> yeah, glad we got out of that business. But like you said, um, the ability to do something from start to end, and I think the ability for something to capture your attention mm-hmm. uh, is, is so important because when you're car detailing, you don't get to like take breaks and look at your phone. Um, you're not like eating specifically well because you're covered in chemicals. Right. You're just like I'm doing this thing. Yeah. And this thing will get done. Yep. Um, you know what to do. You got a system. Yeah. You've done it before. Mm-hmm. Um, and every car is different, but the same. 
Right. There's procedures and systems that you go through, yeah. like you said, it's different but the same. But it's you. You have a, a standard operating procedure of like do this first, clean the door jams, do this, go vac- vacuum the carpet, shampoo the carpets, do mm-hmm. the seats, and then as soon as you're done, you just rinse and repeat. Yeah. And that was a really good system. Yep. Um, and I think a lot of real estate investors can, you know, take that system and, and apply it to their business as well. Yeah. And, and that's where it gets into systematizing your work. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I've ever felt that kind of pleasure mm-hmm. until I started flipping homes. Okay. So there was like a, you know, a big few year gap there mm-hmm. between going from uh, cleaning cars and then I went to selling cars at a different dealership. Mm-hmm. Didn't get the same kind of rewards, dopamine hits or um focused attention i mean i did learn how to stay focused and do my job um and we can talk about that later but yeah. like it, i kind of felt that same thing only it just took instead of it taking four hours to get something done it would take four months um but it, it kind of had the same sort of experience taking some piece of shit home mm-hmm. and then like you pull it out in the sun when it's almost done and you'd be like wow i did that yeah <laughs> Pretty nice stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, it, I think, like, and again, just, just kind of going back into, like, the root of ADHD, like, there, there's fixes, there's medicine, there's things you can do that will help your focus. Um, to me, I think it comes down to two or three main things that really help me. Um, and, and this is something I'm learning as I'm doing, so I'm self-diagnosing in that manner and self-medicating in that manner. Yeah. Um like the first one is like we learned this this weekend too at the conference we were at like the phone is pretty much your devil right yeah like this thing in my pocket but it's the angel at the same time right like it's it's such a double edged sword because it's like you need it to do your work right and uh and you really need to be careful with it because it'll mm-hmm. do too much to you yeah like you can be the user or it could, or or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so definitely your phone. Like, if you're having trouble focusing or being into a, a good state, you got to get rid of your phone or at least the bad crap on your phone. What I do is I turn off all my notifications. Most yeah. of the time, I'll even turn off. I'll break my phone. I have an app that's called Forest. Okay. Um, I love this app so much. It's called Forest. Forest. Okay. What's cool is it, it, it gamifies focus. Okay. So what it does Ooh. is, you, yeah, hear me out here. So you click a button that says, like, I'm going to focus for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever it is. Okay. And you hit it. It starts planting a, a seed, uh-huh. uh, like, a, like a gamified seed on your phone. If you focus for the full time you say you're going to focus, it turns into a cool tree that's in your garden. Ah. If you don't and you start screwing around and dicking around on your phone, you have a rotten tree in your garden. Okay. So I don't want rotten trees in my garden. Do you, a, do you have a problem messing around on your phone too much? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's an easy way to get distracted. I'm not even. Yeah. I'm not even ashamed to say that. I. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not the only American that does. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I pull up Facebook way too much for shit I don't. And care I about. Right. hate it every time. I'm like looking. I'm like, this is all bullshit. It's just ads. Yep. It's just stupid ads. <clears throat> and then people that I don't even like <laughs> 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 talking, and I'm just like, ah, and. And then it's like, I guess I'll I'll check back in in an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like and, and but it has no stop either. It's mm-hmm. not like hey, you've you're done with your scroll. It's like you just keep going. You beat Facebook. You keep no, going. You didn't. You only stop once you get frustrated. Like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And that that's the only time you kind of get out of it, unless a phone call comes in right. or somebody like. Starts walking up to you, you're like, oh, I'm not on Facebook. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Close my phone real quick. How's it going, right? Yeah. Um, but why Why do you think it's such an easy distraction beca- from because, real work? Oh, I, I can go into this pretty well, I think. Okay. Um, so I think it's an easy distraction because we make it easy, first off. Like, it's very convenient. Like yeah. it, It's so easy. Like I can interact with almost the whole world in 10 seconds just by doing this, this. Hey, look at that. I'm seeing what all my friends are doing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and, and they make it this way. Like these, these apps are designed to hold your attention uh, and they do it. Right. So like they're and, designed... until, until you're screaming, <laughs> <laughs> until you're screaming, like why, like how much time did I just burn? The apps get paid. And this is, there's like, I don't know the statistics on this stuff, unfortunately, but the apps get paid based off of how much time you spend on them. Yeah. Right. So well, they're selling to the advertisers like Ryan Jones was just here mm-hmm. last week telling us about, you know, as you're scrolling, there's people bidding yeah. for the next ad. Yeah. 
that's about to pop up in nanoseconds that could yeah. like pop up on your feed, which is so interesting. Yeah, it's so. wild. But yeah, so attention is power right now, and and ad companies and people understand this. Like I work in social media because I do videography and photography for clients who are in front of people. Yeah. So it's my job to be on there too, but it's it's a slippery slope. You know, when am I doing this for pleasure versus when am I doing this for lead generation? Yeah, and it's and it's probably ninety ten. <sighs> yeah. 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 Same Honestly, here. Yeah. And I mean I'll admit it. Again, no I shame waste, with that. I waste so much time on yeah. it. There there's keys that you can do, like I said. So when I need to be in a focus state, I open my forest app, I click the button. What it does is it breaks down my phone. Okay. So I have a, a, a list of apps that are allowed. The apps that are allowed are the phone and messages. And even okay. that, I think, is too much sometimes, unfortunately, because if I'm trying to be in a flow state and I'm getting phone calls left and right, like I get knocked out of flow state very quickly. Okay. Yep. And at that, point, at that point, I'm like, fuck it. I didn't even get in flow state. Why don't I just cancel it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Forest app has been really great. You can also set app limits on your phones if you have problems with them. So like right now, like I have an app limit on my phone that says I can do Facebook for 15 minutes a day. Okay. And then it blocks me out. And that's the Forest app, or is that a different one? That's just straight through my phone in the like notifications privacy thing. I can't remember, but it's an iPhone feature. It is I an guess. iPhone feature. I'm sure they have something like that on Android. I gotta start work. I get, so I've got this iPhone over there that's filming us. Uh huh. I gotta just start using it as a real phone. Yeah. I've got my Android, mm -hmm. which I'm sure has those same. Type I'm of sure apps it does. A lot of times, but... like companies understand that people are spending way too much time on their phones right now. Yeah. Um, and especially like if this gets in the wrong hands, like specifically children or people like me and you, who yep. who can't. <laughs> we're not the only ones again, but like who can't utilize it as a tool for what is being supposed to be used for. A quick commercial break here. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to give back, let me help you buy a house or I can help you sell a house. It's the only way I make money when I'm not investing in real estate. I don't make money on this podcast or the events I do, but I do make money only when I help people buy and sell houses. So if you're looking for your next investment and you're here in North Idaho, I want to help you personally. If you are not in North Idaho, I can still help you out. I have a vast network of referral partners all across the country in Keller Williams Realty, and I can find the right real estate investor savvy agent for you so you don't have to. It doesn't cost you a thing. Thank you for your support. Back to the show. Um, but what is it supposed to be used for is the question. I mean, it's the remote control to your life. Right. You know? It we, does. It's not just the phone anymore. It's it's your communication device. It's it's everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's your research tool. It's your calculator. It's yep. it's everything you can think of. So it's not like the worst thing ever. It's not. Um, and absolutely takes your attention. It's just like, and and it's so it it helps save you so much time. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's another double edged sword. The phone is an amazing tool, and that's why people everybody has one. Right. Uh, if if not everybody had one, it wouldn't be an amazing tool. <laughs> right. It's an easy way to connect with the quite literal entire world. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just full of mines, you know, ground yeah. mines, whatever you call them. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Ground mines? I don't know what you're referencing. So, Like when you're walk, uh, walking around in a field and you get blown up. Oh, landmines. Landmines. Yeah, it's yeah. full of landmines. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> and those are advertisers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not only is that, it, it, it's full of people who... Oh, want your attention because it's good for business it's good for business but let, let's dive a little deeper like it, it's full of a lot of negativity too like, oh yeah you start scrolling on facebook and you see like oh the people going through the hardships like i i don't know the psychology behind it but like does it give you a dopamine hit when you see somebody going through a hard time or does it make you like sink down to their level and and feel with them uh that's a tough one i'm just like that's a bummer yeah, but it, it, just, um, it's, it, but it depends. There's thing, different right? levels. Yeah. There's so many different levels of negativity. There's there's also like this sad thing happened. My wife passed away. I've got to love her. Here's her photo. And you're just like, I don't think that's a bad thing. It's, it's just like, wow, it puts things in perspective. Like, holy shit, my uh, friend's wife just died. Yeah. Like, um, I hope I'm going to utilize this day <laughs> and right. not waste so much time on the phone. As because you never know. Right? Yes. <laughs> never know when our family's going to pass away. And yeah. then you just keep looking. What's next? <laughs> you know? it, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's they're weird, like micro dopamine hits on your phone. Do you ever feel like you're just searching for something, but you don't know what you're looking for when you're scrolling? 
I, I wish I did. Like, I, I don't I, know what I'm doing half the time. Yeah, you're looking for an answer Look to at, something. Yeah. Most and of the times I get in my head, I'm like, I'm like, okay, if I need to research something, I will start the research process and I will very quickly get sidetracked. Yeah. I'm like, what does this do? And I can't find the answer in two seconds. I'm like, better go back to Facebook. <laughs> okay. Maybe Facebook has the answer. <laughs> um, so how much, how much time have you, have you looked on the, like the screen time apps? Like, do you know about how much time you spend on your phone a day? Yeah. And it's embarrassing. You want to share? Nine hours. Nine hours. Yeah. Nine hours looking at the phone. Nine hours being on my phone doing things. Yes. Okay. And, and, you, and you only have like six, 16 hours of waking. Twice. It's so it's taking fucking most. nuts. So more than half your time mm -hmm. th when you're not sleeping. Right. You're looking at a phone. That's crazy. Yeah. Holy fuck, Jeremy. Uh, yes, I know. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. How much do you do? I don't know. Um... It's terrifying statistics, but it, like <laughs> maybe eight and a half hours, <laughs> just a little bit less than me. Yeah. Not nine. No, not nine. Like a fucking psychopath. Okay. Gosh. Um, and I like to think I'm always working on it, and um, and that has a lot of like sixty percent truth to it. Sure. And yeah, most of the times, like I am doing something that's like work, either scheduling phone calls or scheduling appointments. Yeah. But a lot of it's not. Yeah. A lot of that's not, and it's 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 shameful. But I'm not the only one. It's it's again these little like power banks in our pockets are just you can use them for good or you can use them for bad. And this is just one little pillar I'm talking about on the ADHD spectrum. Of course, like this is something that takes my attention, and I'm aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you mostly doing on your phone? If you had to guess, a lot of it. I mean. Yeah, full transparency, right? You do the Facebook scroll, you do the Instagram scroll. A lot of the times what I'm doing on Instagram, though, is I I am legitimately prospecting. Yeah. Um. So so that feels good. Like, every time I open that app, I'm, I'm seeking out realtors. I'm seeking out people who need content. Yeah. I'm commenting on their stuff. I'm saying, like, hey, man, that looks great type of deal. Let me know if you ever need any content. Just throwing my name into the void and seeing what sticks. Yeah. It's actually a pretty good strategy. <laughs> yeah. At least for my business. What, um, one of my biggest fears... Mm -hmm is getting into Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't use those platforms. I have them, I think, mm -hmm. like, profiles set up that I'd like other people to maybe manage and post stuff. Sure. But, like, just just having Facebook and YouTube, Yeah, I probably spend four hours a day on those. Yeah. Easy. Now, the, the sweet thing about my YouTube is that um, I, I pay for the premium and I can and I can just listen to stuff with the screen off. Nice, that's good. Um, and I think that that was like the best investment I ever made. And you don't have any ads sure. ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty nice, especially if you're going to um, use and it. There's Let YouTube Music, like it includes you know all the music you want, all that stuff. And I I absolutely I I use it a lot. Good. Um, but I I play with the idea of deleting Facebook. Yeah. Even though it is, I've got you know almost two thousand friends or whatever you want to call them their acquaintances mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> people, people that are that we've hit the button together <laughs> yeah, yeah. i hit a button you hit a button nice um and it's like well that's a that's a huge potential lead pool mm -hmm. and i have gotten deals from i would imagine you know people seeing my stuff right so it's like man do you kill kill that just for the idea that your life might be better without it it's a good question. I think um, I've talked to Sarah Barb a lot recently, but she'll go on like um, social media purges, and she'll just delete everything for three months. Okay. Like it doesn't have to delete her profiles or anything like that. But she'll be like, "Okay, I, I'm done with social. Like it has served its use for me. I will delete it, and then when I'm ready to do more, I will reinstall." Yeah. Um, and that's worked really well for her. They should call them like dopamine detox. I think is what it is. There's a there's a book about it. Okay. Um, Dopamine detox. Yeah, but it's just a good way to get out of the digital world, which it is hard. And I will say this for anyone who's like trying to be in front of people, like where are the people at right now? The people are on Facebook. The people are on Instagram. And it's our job as business professionals to get leads. And this is just the easiest way to acquire leads, for, in is. my opinion. It's the most convenient. It's the most effective, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Other than picking up the phone and calling people. But nobody... And I say nobody with quotes. Yeah. People answer. Sure. But 
I, I, 80% of people aren't going to answer your call. Right. And that's where like, you know, like Facebook and Instagram do come in and they yeah. play, they, they fill in that gap for sure. Uh, because you can, you can send a message and it doesn't have to be, you're not like you're prospecting or anything like that. You can just kind of reach out and get some information and yeah. see if you click or see if it makes sense for a phone call after. Right. Yeah. It's just like a, it can be like a pre phone call. Um, so I'd like to ask you, mm -hmm. It, if we can not totally switch topics oh, yeah, here, but absolutely. because you are more of an expert, I believe in the ADHD, like, I don't even know what ADHD stands for. I would imagine attention deficit, something disorder. You're absolutely right. It's um, hyperactive, hyperactive. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. But do, for instance, ever since we've been, I hit record on this podcast, what's captured about 20% of my attention mm -hmm. is this little clip right up here. That's not clipped. On oh, yeah. your mic? Right oh, no. I've been, wanting, I've been wanting so bad right, we to got just it. We go, fixed it. Just, just move that clip. Right, right. Um, do you think I have any form <laughs> uh, based off that? Because it, it has, I, I've probably put, you know, we've been running 30 minutes now. Mm -hmm. um, I've thought about it probably eight to 10 times, really considering leaning over and fixing it and halfway paying attention to you. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, because that thing has got my attention, okay. even though it's such a small, insignificant thing. But I feel like, you know, it took up a tiny little piece of camera space, you know, and we're talking folks that aren't watching. It was seriously a half inch yeah. little clip on a microphone stand that was sticking upwards when it could have been clipped down. Mm -hmm. But I put, wait, I put a lot of attention to that in the last 30 minutes. Okay. Do you think... My self-diagnosed internet thing. Do you think that had anything to do with ADHD? Because it did capture a lot of my attention. Mm -hmm. Or do you think it was more like a um, obsessive compulsive disorder? I was going to say, so here's what it feels like to have ADHD, first of all. Um, it, it feels like you have, you've got your brain and I consider my brain almost highways, right? There's like, you know, three or four highways where things are going. Um, there's fog on all of these highways. Yeah. Right, so I can see like three feet in front of me, but I'm constantly shifting from roads. I'm being like, okay, what's on this road? What's on this road? What's on this road? Are there more roads? How many more roads can I can I put into my brain? There's there's like a constant moving of like where should my attention be? Uh huh. What you're saying, I'm not a doctor. That sounded more like OCD. Okay. Like you you were obsessed on a thing. Yeah. See me, I would have been like. Oh, there's a clip I need to fix. And then I'm like, okay, make a mental note to fix the clip. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm going to look at your water. Okay, you've got some water droplets on your water. Yep. How's my mic level doing? Is it still in green? And then I'm uh -huh. going to forget all about this until I really need to think about it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. I need to do that one task that I was supposed to do. Uh huh. <laughs> um, and again, like everyone who has this, I think, analyzes things a little bit differently. Okay. So I, I can't say one way or another. Yeah. You're but not, um, you're not a I'm constantly like, shifting my attention like i'll start a task and this happens all the time in my house i swear I'll, i'm like oh i need to empty or I'll, I'll i'll i have a dish yep i just ate dinner the dish is dishes in the dishwasher are clean i'm like okay i need to i need to empty the dishwasher before i put this dish away right so then before i do that i'm like uh oh i threw a banana peel away and the garbage is full i uh -huh. take the garbage out yeah, and then when I do that, I'm like, "Do we have any more fruit?" Uh huh. Like, oh crap! <laughs> oh, we're we running have any out of bananas. Fruit? I have to go to the store to get bananas. Right? Uh huh. Yeah. And then I'm like, "Oh, I don't have gas in my car. <laughs> I need to go to the store to get gas in my car." Now, did you have enough to get there, or did you have very little gas? I had very little gas, hypothetically, okay. right? But but like the train, the problem was I need to put my dish away. Yeah. And now. I'm going to the store for bananas. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Um, now, did you ever put the dish away? Eventually, yes, it gets there. But like, okay, but not till you got back home with the bananas. Right. There's a video online. It was from <laughs> Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. Um, it was Brian Cranston. Yeah. You um, showed me. It was hilarious. Yeah. It, it's the exact epiphany of like what I feel in my head. He goes to do a thing. Some. It, he. I think he starts out. He's like, oh, there's a squeak in my drawer. <laughs> and then he's like, I guess to go find the WD-40. And then while he's out there, he looks at his car, and his car needs this. And then he's like, <laughs> next thing later, it's like four in the morning. Uh -huh. And, oh, it starts with him wanting to fix a light bulb. His wife comes in, and he's fixing his car. Yeah. 
And she's like, aren't you going to fix that light bulb? He goes, don't you see I'm working on it? <laughs> and I'm like, that, that's, that's literally it. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> it's all these other things that came up, and yeah. I don't know what to put my attention on. Exactly. So it, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very hard, I will say, to... And I, I find myself stopping most times being like, what, what is the task I need to do at hand? Okay. Because, because I'm, I'm either making excuses... Or that's just the way my brain works. Like, in order to optimize this one task, I need to I need to waterfall it down and do everything else in my life. Okay. So, I've seen you grow a lot, mm-hmm. and you seem to have your shit way better. Thank you. Together these days. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I knew you when you lived um, under the stairs at your parents' house. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was a little tiny room under the stairs. We're not joking. It's like Harry Potter. Uh huh. And uh, your room was a fucking mess. <laughs> okay. Yes, but you had a system mm-hmm. where all the sh- all the junk <laughs> that was on your floor mm-hmm. um, when you wake up in the morning, <laughs> you threw it all on your bed. Yep, floor to bed. No, it was chair to bed for the chair most to bed. Part. Yeah, chair yeah. to bed, floor <laughs> office bed. And so- <laughs> it went from when I needed to sleep, I threw all the junk on my bed to my office chair. When I needed to work, I threw all the stuff on my office chair to the floor and then it would stay on the floor until i needed to do something else on the floor or i got sick of it yeah and and i would never fix the problem yeah I, you I were would... just you're always moving the problem here yes and taking the problem to here mm-hmm. taking the problem here and i always thought in my head when i was a kid like why don't you just if you deal with the problem then you save like 90 hours over the next three four years yep. <laughs> <laughs> of of switching your problem from here to here to here to here uh-huh. like why don't we just get this room cleaned but i didn't want to Say that I no. I was a kid I didn't care as much yeah, back I then I just that. noticed I just grew up with the habit of like I had to make my bed before I left my room right and it was just a, just a habit mm-hmm. and then it became an obsession right uh, I don't actually make my bed as much anymore but I, I've got to be pretty tidy or yeah. I can't I can't seem to focus yeah and I I agree with you there one hundred percent I have learned yeah. that recently in my life mm-hmm. like if there's clutter um I get distracted by the clutter yeah. Or, or it's a mental weight of like I need to do these things, but again with like ADHD, like I find myself it, it's almost like a tug of war for my attention in my head. Um, like people pulling on strings, like do this task, it'll help. But I have fifty of those happening. Yeah. So just nothing ever gets done if I don't focus and be intentional about it. So what are some things that you're doing these days? Um, besides the apps on the phone sure. that help you stay focused on deep work, because being in the media business, mm-hmm. holy shit, do you have to focus? And you don't have anyone telling you what to do by yeah. a certain timeline. So, what what are some shifts that you've made in mindset or or um, or physically um, mm-hmm. that have gotten you where you are now? Yeah, good question, Nick. So there's a lot that goes into this. I think it comes down to like your mental health and your diet a lot. Okay. Um, like the, the food you put in there and we learned about this this weekend as well. Like what you put into your engine is like how well your engine runs. Yeah. Put junk (laughs) in, get junk out. 100%. (laughs) Um, and, and I'm guilty of that still, but I, I'm, and last couple of weeks have been, I will say hard to get good workouts in new baby. Yeah. Um, no you've sleep. got a pretty, the ultimate excuse right now. Right. (laughs) So, but like nobody's, I'm yearning so hard, like to go work out. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, just finding a time that doesn't like impact or put my wife out of commission once the weather starts getting better i mean it, it it you can throw the baby in a little backpack and go hiking yeah and stuff and i know it's like she's still pretty young you mm-hmm. might have to change her diaper on the hill yeah <laughs> that I, kind I'm of stuff okay with that but, stuff um I think once the weather gets better, like all of our lives are going to improve a little bit here. Yeah, we're getting there. We're rounding that corner so fast. Yeah, I'm, I've been time. so desperate for good weather. <laughs> Me too. But yeah, know. so so you know, like I said, diet diet definitely helps. I'm I'm more intentional nowadays about what I put in my body. Um, I'm not perfect. I'm not a hundred percent perfect. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that like. I don't have cookies every now and then because I do. Yeah, but you drop the energy drinks. Drop the energy drinks. That was pretty big, I think. Um, I, need to, I need to do that. I, I really, and this is, I hate to say, like, I really need to do this without in, without a way to make it happen. Um, journaling. Okay. Meditation. Like, when I get to be inside my own head and specifically be there without having the, the yank to get pulled out, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, so if I could journal and I, I've been doing this mornings too, like I write out all that's on my schedule. What do I have to do today? What are the tasks I need to get done? 
what should I get done? Mm -hmm. And that's like, so, you know, like what needed to get done this morning was podcast. And then I have photo shoots this afternoon. How do you know what to prioritize these days? Because that's always been difficult for you in the past. Yeah. Um, Truth is, I don't. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I can give you a hint. Yeah. (laughs) If if somebody calls you with a photo shoot, mm-hmm. you schedule them. You just I think the priority is you follow your calendar. Yes, I would agree with that one hundred percent. And you follow your deadlines because mm-hmm. you've promised people that you will get back. You know the next business day, right? Yep, yep. is when you deliver. Mm-hmm. So you have these things like that. You you have to get done. You don't have the choice anymore. One hundred percent. There are bigger projects. Like right now, I've probably got four or five like huge projects for media yeah. that are just back burner projects. That's got to be tough. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be tough when to know how to prioritize those things that don't spe- have specific deadlines. Yeah, and, and it's to those points where I'm – so going into the summer, I'm going to be doing, I think, wedding videography specifically at your brother's venue. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know this. Um, he, he's trying to he – he wanted a videographer option and sounds like we'd be a good fit for each other. Okay. Uh, shout out to Brandon and Eva Beverage, by the way. I think Brandon listens to this podcast. So. Does he? Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Evermore Event Center in Deer Park, Washington. It's um, the best and most affordable yep. wedding experience you'll ever have. That's where I got married, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, but yeah, so I got married doing... before he had the event center yeah. open. Other Fuck way... you, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, you heard you, it here you first. You should have done it quicker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so like I think this this summer I will be taking on specifically weekend weddings um, for videography only. I didn't want to be a photographer. Okay. I, I just want to do a cool video because I've been really engulfed in video, yeah. that kind of media, and I think I do a pretty decent job so I can... But with that, I am putting time frames on things when I get things back. Okay. They're they're like loose time frames. Like, you'll have your video back in three weeks, which is pretty damn good for a lot of videographers. So what do you do during those three weeks? Do you uh, wait till the last minute? Uh, or, we'll figure or do it out you... when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> or do you have a system of like doing like a certain amount of hours per day on certain it, certain projects? I will say so, and this is like not really dealing with ADHD. It might be, but when I have big video projects, it, it's really hard. So if you only get like an hour or two to work on them a day, it, it's like an artist. What it, what I mean by that is, say you're going to paint this big grand portrait. And yeah. you get out your you get out your canvas and you get out your paints and you get out your tarp and that's just me setting up my projects right and then by the time I'm set up I typically have to leave. Okay. Um, so it's like I'm trying to create a story in my head. Yeah. And, and if I get an hour and I get everything set up and then I have to do other tasks, I'm like I didn't do anything that hour. Okay. Because now I have to reset up my canvas. Gotcha. Um, so the bigger projects are a little bit harder, but we're working through that. Nice. Um, yeah. So, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> what are the biggest hacks okay that and i'll tell you mine yeah um i i think about 10 years ago is like when my real estate business finally started like gaining a lot of traction mm-hmm. and that was because i went through this course uh this bold course through keller williams realty yeah where it's like a every tuesday is just like high intensity for the full day of like how to generate for leads how to talk to people how to do sales that kind of stuff mm-hmm and it was taught by this guy that like flew in from somewhere in Colorado. And, um, and he was telling the story about like how he would sometimes, um, miss things on his, uh, miss appointments, mm-hmm. but because they weren't in his calendar. Yes. And so his wife and his assistants and everybody knew that, Hey, it, if something's not in his calendar, he's not going to do it. And it was just a really- light bulb that went off in my head. Like, Hey, if I can commit to something, because mm-hmm. I wasn't, I had a hard time committing to things back then. Mm-hmm. What's the one thing I can commit to that will like pretty much guarantee me getting stuff done? And that was like, what if I just stuck to whatever I put in my calendar? I did. Yeah. And if it wasn't in my calendar, I had the option to not do stuff. Yeah. I think that's um, great. So I, I made a firm commitment to myself that that, that would be the one thing I will do mm-hmm. is I will start using a Google calendar, not a physical one that I can lose. Right. But something that's on my phone that also syncs up online, yep. my my desk computer at work, my desk computer at home, and and I just always have it, just like I have my emails up, and I always you know I pull up my emails in the morning and I pull up my calendar, mm-hmm. and if if my calendar was blank, I didn't have to do anything that day. Yeah, and that was what I convinced myself, but I knew I can't just not do stuff. Yes, <laughs> so I started scheduling. Mm-hmm. things and um if and that includes appointments with myself right 
Like, okay, it from 9 to 10, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm-hmm. I'm going to be making calls to these people here. Mm-hmm. And so I just set up a repeat in my calendar. This is what's happening. Yeah. Anytime I wanted to meet with anybody ever, it's always in a calendar. Mm-hmm. I send them an, an invite. Yep. And, um, and to this day, like I, that's like one thing I can just lean on is mm-hmm. my calendar. What am I doing today? And I pull up my calendar. If I have some free time, I have free time to fuck off. Yeah. Um, and I just give myself that permission. Like if it's everything that's in my calendar, as long as I just do that, I should have success. If I feel like it's important enough to go on my calendar, I'm going to do it. Sure. And then that, in my head, it's just helped me know what the priorities are. Mm -hmm. And if it's not in my calendar, it's not important. Okay. Yeah. So I just don't do it. I think that's really great, Nick. Um, I am with you there. I, if it's not in the calendar, it typically doesn't get done. Yeah. And I could be a little bit more strict with my calendar. I don't know about you, but the worst thing for somebody who has ADHD to do is have a blank calendar day. Okay. Yeah. And and the reason is if I don't see anything on my calendar, like you said, like I could fuck off that day. Yeah. But the thing is over time Mm -hmm. you start putting in things that are important on repeat. Right. Um, so if you look at my calendar, even if I didn't schedule anything for the last week, I have things I got to do. Yep. Like I can pull it up right now. Sure. Like for instance, our podcast. Yep. Like we decided a a year and a half ago or so, Hey, why don't we do a podcast Mondays and Fridays at nine 30 and we both, and we put it on the calendar, put it on repeat. We both have it. Yep. And that's how we were able to do like a hundred podcasts (laughs) in the last year and a half. And that's, um, and I wouldn't ever be able to do that Mm -hmm. before without, having it reminded me constantly it's in my face just like brushing my teeth this morning i realized something Mm -hmm. i realized i have really nice teeth (laughs) and it wasn't because and i I know i'm gonna sound cocky here no good you got nice but as i was brushing i was just thinking about it i'm like it's not because you know once in a while i brush my teeth really well Mm -hmm. or you know this one time i brushed them so good it's because my toothbrush is right here by my sink Mm -hmm. like it's right in front of my face and I do it every day. Right. And it's not in my calendar, but... Um, <laughs> it's an automatic But calendar. I was thinking to myself, like, there, there's some things about, you know, it's these nice teeth, they, t- they, they take time mm-hmm. to maintain. You got to be consistent about it every day. But what, that's helped me, like, the physical location of the item. If yeah. my toothbrush was in the cabinet, right, I probably wouldn't brush my teeth twice a day. Interesting. Yeah. The habit is there because it's convenient for you and it's right there to do. It's right there. But, and not in, it wouldn't be intentionally I didn't brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. It was just because uh, sometimes I probably just wouldn't think about it because it's not right there by my sink as I'm getting ready in the morning. Right. Do you like brushing your teeth? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Sam makes fun of me for how much I love brushing my teeth. I'm like, I think it feels so freaking good. Uh huh. (laughs) (laughs) And then there are times where, um, like, we're playing basketball late at night. Mm hmm. Um, well, uh, sorry, I'll go back. I brush my teeth every night too, before we go to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, because my wife and I are brushing our teeth together. Yeah. It's like something that we do when we're getting ready to go to bed just before we go to bed. Like we're both brushing our teeth at the same time. It's like I have an accountability partner. Yeah. Okay. So it's not enough to just be right there because sometimes after we play basketball, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm up till like one in the morning right. and I'm just so tired and I come upstairs and I'm, I'm just like, I'll just go to bed because, and it's part of it is because. Um, I don't have that accountability partner right. <laughs> brushing <laughs> her teeth with me right there. Yeah. I just go right to bed. Um, and it's not right in front of my face. Sure. Like as I'm part of the routine. Yeah. So I think routines have really helped me in life with my self diagnosed internet quiz, <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> I think you're right. Like, like no. having a routine and, and having accountability is important, yeah. right? Cause you can have a routine and if you don't follow it, yeah. it's not a routine. Yeah. And, and everybody knows, sees my calendar at work. Like my, mm-hmm. my, uh, p- business partners, um, the people that are on my team get to see my calendar. I've got and your calendar my, on my yep, phone. You've got it. <laughs> um, it's nice my, to know like, Hey, my employees, Nick, when can I get Nick? Yeah. And, and it, it's part of an accountability too. Like if they if they see me do doing something that's not on my calendar, they can call me out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. That's that's accountability for sure. Um, kind of getting back into like I know we're pushing fifty minutes here, but how can how can someone with ADHD thrive in the real estate investing world? Um, intentional with your focus, right? 
Yeah, that's what I, I'm going to I'm going to dig my notes here. You go ahead. OK, yeah, sorry, because yeah. because um, we, we, we learned a little bit about this. We did know that focus talk from Anthony Vecino. I think that's what his name yeah. was. That was great. Um, fantastic talk, by the way. He just gave you so many tools about how to uh, direct your focus and how to use your ADHD as a superpower. And like that talk specifically, like I was glued in because that was something that hit home for me. And I knew it home, hit home for Nick because I saw him talking and writing or writing the entire time. You yeah, know gotta, Nick pays attention a at a conference when he actually writes. Otherwise, he's just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> when when can I pee next? Or yeah. should I get more coffee? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, close the loops that don't matter. That yes. was that was important to me. Like, the, the things like... Because there's so many things that we do all day long that mm-hmm. don't matter. Yeah. As long as we can identify what those are and just close them. Um, that, that was big for me because there, there's still a lot of things I randomly do throughout the day that just don't matter. I don't need to do them. And, and that's like, that's part of like what I talk about, you know, that journey from like washing the plate or whatever. That's, that's, I think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to close these loops that don't matter. Yeah. So I can focus on the task that does. Yeah. Um, but un- unfortunately, like sometimes you just have a lot of loops, yeah. <laughs> especially if you're ADHD, like there, there's more loops than you can close in a day. Yeah, and like as a metaphor, he said, "Don't water fake fl- uh, fake plants." Yep, that was a that was a good one. <laughs> Very good, I love that. Um, something something else that he mentioned, you know, just it's something as simple as just having a task list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I remember my my first couple of years in real estate. I was I I think I did really su- I was pretty successful because I had a physical index card that I would use every morning. And I would start it off with just like, I, I have my basic things like, hey, I'm going to get up, I'm, I'm going to uh, go to the bathroom, and I'm going to take my pills, I'm going to take my dog for a walk, I'm going to work out, I'm going to take my greens. I had all this all on an index card mm-hmm. that I would prepare the night before, yeah. and I would just, I would get dopamine hits just by crossing things off all day. And That's then what were the important things I got to do that day for work? I wrote those down too. On a, on a simple little like nine, um, three by nine index card or three by five, three by five mm-hmm. index card. And that was my system before the calendar. Yeah. And it worked really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of got out of that habit and now it's, I focus more on just what's in my calendar. It's a little bit more broad. Right. I don't get, and I, I feel like maybe I don't get the same dopamine hits because I'm not checking stuff off of a list as much as I used to. And I want to try to get back in the habit. Yeah. And he of, specifically talked about, you know, like when you focus for an hour and you go to the bathroom and you get coffee and you check the fridge, like you're not focusing for an hour. You're probably focusing for like 35 minutes out of that hour. Yeah. Uh, and I, I got totally a lot true. of I got a lot of uh, worth out of that too. Um, Grant Cardone, like if you if you need help with your calendar, Grant Cardone is a an absolute psychopath on how he runs his calendars or how he <laughs> tells his people to run his calendars. He schedules his calendars out by the minute. Um, so if he's going to be making calls, like I'm making calls for 22 minutes, I'm going to go pee for three minutes. I'm uh-huh. back to making calls for another 45 minutes. I'm going to get lunch for 17 minutes. And like, if you want full accountability yeah schedule out by the minute i am not there yet but damn that 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 seems like it'd be very effective yeah but then again it's just another notification going off like oh i got a thing oh i got a thing and it doesn't allow me to like naturally get into a flow state yep another thing that he mentioned that i used to do quite often kind of got out of the habit of it but i need to start picking it back up because it was such a simple stupid um, tool, Mm -hmm. but super effective is just, it's just called like brain dumping where everything that's on your mind and things that you should do that you haven't completed yet, they take up room in your brain and they don't go away as a natural instinct, uh, until you've completed something and then it will go away. Mm -hmm. Or if you take it out of your brain and write it down as a thing, you know, something to do. Yeah. So like I use Google keep a lot and I've got this, um, or this other task list on monday.com and like anything that like things that I should be doing or should do eventually, I've got it. I've got to continue to like dump that onto paper or in, in some sort of a, I'll get back to it list. Otherwise it just takes up room in your brain and it makes you more inefficient throughout the day Yeah, because you're just going to be thinking about those things until you've put it on paper Yeah, or somewhere else. Absolutely. And with that too. So like, I, I like to consider your brain, um, as almost Ram in a computer. Right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I you gotta, that, cl- you gotta clean it out every once in a while. And I, I think of like clogged brain Ram is open tabs in like Google yeah. Chrome or something like that. Yeah. Like the more, cr- if you hover over these, it'll tell you how much exactly Ram each is taking. See memory usage, 168 megabytes. Wow. Um, 
176. So you think of these. All these tabs are open, 58 yep. megabytes. Those are all taking from your internal RAM on your computer, slowing it down. Right. Um, the more tabs you have open, hypothetically, in your head, the slower your brain goes. So like Nick oh, said. Oh, it feels so good to get rid of these. Yeah. Doesn't it feel good to get rid of those? Don't get rid <laughs> uh-huh. of the one we're recording on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> keep that one. But yeah, so if your brain is clogged with open tabs, you, you got to close the loop, like Nick said. You got to close those tabs. You have to figure out a way to get those out so you can maximize your brain power for sure. Okay. Um, focus on the system, not the goal. I love that. Yeah. Um, I think the system and systematizing things for people with ADHD is so good because, again, if you if you write it out like, oh, the goal is to clean the house, that that is absurd. The goal needs to be to do the dishes, to vacuum, to dust. Or the system needs to be those. And once you complete the system, the goal will get done. Yeah. I like this, what he does, too. He sets, he has an alarm that goes off on his phone three or four times a day, and it just says, hey, what's my outcome here? Yeah. What have I done to it? <laughs> no, what's my, like, right now, like, just on the spot, like, it was, it's like a quick little audit, like, hey, are you doing, like, whatever you're working on right now, what's going to be the outcome of what you're doing? Yeah. That's really so good. it's like kind of a good reminder, like if you're slacking off and you get that message, like, oh, yeah, I should probably get back to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the buzz on your – do you get it on your watch where like if you've been sitting too long, yes. it like it buzzes <laughs> you like, hey, why don't you get up and move around yeah, a little bit? you haven't taken 250 steps this hour. You should move. And, and that is a key. And half the time I want to give it an excuse like, oh, but I'm driving. <laughs> or, I can't move right <laughs> now. I'm recording a podcast. Yeah, give yeah. me a second. <laughs> um, I will say like you know, ADHD, and I, I talked a little bit about diet, but – Getting outside and just being in nature and, and seriously being off your phone, like doing the purge. Don't bring your phone with you when you go on a walk. Just go on a walk. Um, it's, it's good for mental clarity for sure. And we're talking about Anthony, Anthony Vecino here specifically. If you don't know him, find him. He's fantastic with his work. One quote he said that I really liked um, was, focus is the ability to direct your attention with an, an intention. Mm-hmm. Direct your attention with intention. Um, yeah. And that's exactly what focus is, right? Yeah. But it's easier if you just stay focused on the system right? rather than the goal. Mm-hmm. The system that will get you that goal. Because if you're just constantly focusing on the goal, you might be all over the place mm-hmm. and just not know what to focus on. Right. Exactly. So have a system in place. Some things that he does to get ready and that, you know, when he goes to work, clears off his desk. He lights a candle. Um uh, he'll write how long, um, like 30 seconds, starting at 20, right? Oh, he'll write down how long he's going to work. Yep. Like for, until his next distraction, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm going to work for the next 40 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Um, I like that. There's a pedometer. Uh, is that, no, what, what's the, what's the system where you're like 25 minutes on five minute breaks? Oh, um, some sort of a timer interval timer or something like that. Ah, I forgot what it's called. Yeah. It starts with the P. Um, and then he, he, said, he does this thing where he sniffs boom boom. I, that sounds gay to me. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I thought that would actually be really helpful, honestly. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, what, you're smelling a, a shit stick? What are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like an essential oil blast of, because, you know, your smell can really fuel your environment, is what he says. Yeah. Because basically, if you're getting out of your environment, it's because your senses are, are getting distracted and wandering. And you want, if you want attention and alertness, he said, sniff like a peppermint stick. And I was like, that could probably work, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, and I like his idea of you got to warm up for everything, like when you're about to work out. And you also got to work, if you're about to go to work, you got to kind of wor- warm up your mind right. a little bit for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, meditation or float tanks. Um, and I I used to do float tanks like every, every couple of months okay. a few years ago. Um, I felt like incredible doing that. And I, I want to, I should get back in the habit of that too. Where do you go to do that? There, there was a place called Float Spokane. Um, there's a place in Post Falls too. Okay. Um, over on the strip mall off 41. Okay. Um, but it's it, it's great. That's where you're just you're in an, like a dark room. You, you shower off before you get in this like uh, saltwater tank. Mm-hmm. You're by yourself, and uh, and then you you get in this water where you're floating, mm-hmm. um, and you, you shut it, and it's just complete darkness. Um, and some music comes on for a few minutes and then it goes off or you can have it on the whole time. Yeah. And then you're just, you're laying in complete isolation. Um, wow. Uh, no distractions for a full hour. I love that. And you wouldn't believe, um, what that starts doing to your mind. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just crazy. Can you imagine not getting a single distraction, not even like a movement on your body and you're awake 
for yeah. a full hour. It's uh, it's incredible. I mean, it's worth the 50 bucks or whatever it is. Sure. That sounds really good. <laughs> um, because it's just like you're able to actually start really getting into your mind and thinking about what's important in life. Mm -hmm. And like, what, what are some things that you, like, I, it's, it always helped me with problem solving. Okay. Like, what am I facing lately that I need to figure out? Mm -hmm. Um, decisions, um, people in my life that I'm grateful for, um, people that I, I need to stop thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it gives you a full hour to yourself where you're not sleeping, okay. but you might as well be. Yeah. Um, and you're absolutely, um, paralyzed to the physical world. I love it. It, it's, it's an insane, I, I've never, I've, that's why I, I've done it so many, I, I gotta go back and do it again, because I just remember every time you walk out of there, you feel like such at peace. Write it down and make it put it on your schedule. Yeah, good point. Otherwise, right. you're not gonna do it. Um, <laughs> float tank. Float tank, I love it. Um, so, so kind of going forward with this, like, everyone has a problem. It, it doesn't need to be a problem, it can be a superpower as well, but just just finding a way to utilize your strengths and be aware of your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like, we're not perfect. We've talked about how I spend way too much time on my phone. I'm honest about it. That That's something. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there's no cure for this thing. It just takes constant work and effort. Yeah, th there's no, like, fixing. There, there There's work. You just constantly work on yourself and try to be better the next day than you were the day before. Yep. Well... Hope you guys got something out of that. Yeah. I enjoyed our conversation. I did too. Thank it was you good. for uh, bringing this one up last minute. I was like, oh, we can talk about this. Yeah. I can, I can we didn't even joke around much this podcast. We usually joke around a lot. Yeah, maybe we can I make think some we jokes got, in the we got intro pretty or serious. Like that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, um, thanks again from Nick and I wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, again, if you enjoyed this and you haven't left a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, what are you doing with your life? Go do that right now. Stop listening right now and go leave us a five-star review and then come back and listen to the last 10 seconds because we love you. <laughs> I love you very much. Thank uh, you so much for listening, everybody. Yep. We'll see you next week. Bye. Boop, boop. What's up, North Idaho people? Hello. Hey, we've got an amazing real estate seminar coming to Coeur d'Alene here later this year. We want to tell you about it so that you'll hurry up and buy tickets. Yes, get your tickets. The amazing Kathy Fecky is flying yep. in. AJ Osborne, the king of self storage, is flying in. Steve Rosenberg, y'all know him, he's muscly. Brad Chandler, change your life. Tom Wright, man of the hour, get a free book too when you sign up. Quickly do it before the end of the month and you'll get a free book. Thank you so much for checking out the Investor Shed podcast. If you enjoyed your time, make sure to leave a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow along on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at The Investor Shed for shorts and promos about each episode. Do you want to be a guest or know someone who has great real estate investing advice and stories? Reach out to us at theinvestorshed at gmail.com.